Hello guys and girls, this is Phoenix Tremaine and I have just got back from my very first Madonna concert. Finally, I went to see her. It was a last minute um, thing. One of my friends was like, you know Madonna's going to be in D.C. And I was like, no I didn't know. So I checked for tickets and you know there were tickets available. So um, I went to my first Madonna concert and quite possibly my last Madonna concert. <laughs> so, um, let's get right to it. Okay, I took notes so that uh, I used to be a reporter for a newspaper, so I know to take notes. And um, this is the, the book that you get, you know, the program you get. It's like, eh. So, I can't believe I paid $30 for this. $30? Come on. 30 bucks, really? So, um, the concert itself, um, very disappointing. I'm just going to come straight out with it. I, it was not what I expected. I actually, halfway through the concert, I was like, look, at, I went on Google, I went, pulled up a Google on my phone. And I looked for a Madonna set list, and I'm like, I gotta find out like how many songs is here. <laughs> when am I getting the fuck out of here? So um, basically, uh, the concert started with the song "Iconic." Um, the video montages were great, um, but the problem with the Rebel Heart tour is the Rebel Heart album. Um, it's not her best album. I know a lot of critics and a lot of fans say, oh, this is Madonna's best album. But, you know, it's not just her one of her least, most, maybe it's her least selling album. But, or American Life is, one or two. But, um, like, every time Madonna releases a concert, I usually watch them on DVD or Blu-ray or whatever. Um, but, every time she releases a concert, that concert is mostly from the album with some classic songs thrown in and um, this was no different and the problem with the concert was there were a lot of songs that the entire audience just wasn't feeling you know and I'll go down one by one Iconic was one of those songs it starts off the tour um, but the I mean the imagery was great the guys in their gladiator gear her and her outfit um, the set was great, the costumes were great, the dancers were great, um, but the song itself was like, yeah, okay, what's the next song? Um, the next song went directly into Bitch I'm Madonna, which a lot of fans do like from the Rebel Heart album, and so, you know, I saw a lot of people dancing and, and you know, screaming Bitch I'm Madonna. Um, I think that's the song she also gets into, because you can really see in the beginning of the concert, her energy was pretty high. Um, let me note this. Uh, she was late. You know, the guy next to me was like, oh, she's always late. You should see how long it took her to come out for a reinvention tour. So the concert started at 8. Um, there was no opening act, or I guess the opening act was a DJ, like what Brittany did. So there was a DJ as the opening act, and he played for an hour. And the the Verizon Center, which is where I went in D.C., it was half empty, you know. But um, it it the I was it said that it had sold out. They had said it sold out, and the guy was like, you know, I made sure I had an aisle seat. And the guy next to me was like, you know, you should go to Ticketmaster and complain because I went online and the seats in our aisle are now half price. I was like what? You know, so they were trying to fill the stadium up by any means necessary. You know, so the tickets went half price. Even and then I went on online on Ticketmaster, and like the seats that were way up, like I was close to the stage, but the seats were like way, way up. The nosebleed seats, they were like they went from fifty six dollars to like twenty five, thirty dollars. You know, something like that. You know, the my section has sold out, but. I don't know how it sold out because it was still a bunch of empty seats. 
And throughout the entire stadium, you know, they kept turning lights on. You could see there were a lot of pockets of empty seats. You know, the stadium, for the most part, it I think it said if it's almost 19,000 people, 18,700, something like that. So um, I would say maybe 15, 16,000 people showed. So, I mean, it's still a good, good turnout. It's still a stadium turnout. But um, I think it's just a reflection of the album. So after Bitch of Madonna, she did Burning Up. And she, she did a really good job. She did it live. Now, I noticed in this concert, which I noticed in the last concert, that before when Madonna did a concert, she would do everything live. She went on interviews saying, I don't care if I'm hoarse, I'm singing live. She don't do that no more. You know, half the concert was her singing live, and half of the concert was her singing to a track. It was a clear difference in her voice. You can tell when Madonna was singing live and when it was a track running. Um, and then she went into uh, the second song from the album, Devil Pray, or Devil Will Pray, whatever it's called. And the audience, once again, it just, it was like everybody from Burning Up. No, for, after Burning Up, she did Holy Water. Now, that is actually the reason why I went to the concert. The only song on the album I truly liked was Holy Water. And I actually don't like that she's blended it with Vogue. But um, Holy Water was a double-edged sword. It was probably one of my favorite performances. It was back to Madonna being raunchy with the half-naked nuns that were strippers and up and down a pole and she stands on one girl while she's spinning around. And then Madonna, for some reason, she does this lame-ass stripper turn. You know, like she goes to the top of the pole and for the rest of the song, she just spins, 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 spins. But it's not, I've seen plenty of strippers, so trust me, it wasn't like a stripper spin. She had girls doing stripper spins that were like amazing that the crowd was like, oh shit, you know, fuck Madonna, look at these bitches. You know, so the girls were hot. Of course, the Asian girls, I don't, I can't remember their name. I've seen them a lot on YouTube. You know, they were really, really good, especially with the Vogan part. But, the bad part of Holy Water, which was my favorite song and my favorite performance, is that uh, Madonna slowed down. I know she's older or whatever. It's been 30 years. She said that several times in, in the show. It's been 30 years. But when it came to the Vogue part, it was like you could see her dancers holding back. And they always do that when she does Vogue because you don't know how to Vogue. 30 years, <laughs> it's been at least 20 years since Vogue has come out. And she still don't know how to Vogue. I've seen voguing. I've seen people do voguing lame voguing and they did it better than Madonna. So I don't know what Madonna's hand gestures is because that's what it is. It's not voguing, it's hand gestures and she don't even try anymore. <laughs> Go on YouTube and look at it. She don't even try anymore. But, um, but Vogue slowed way down. It wasn't a high tempo song anymore. Vogue was actually slower than Holy War which just kind of caught me off guard. But I also noticed that there were other songs in the show that were normally fast songs that slowed way the fuck down. And I'm like, so is this the new Madonna we're getting? You know, where she can't dance the way she used to, so she's going to slow the songs down so she the songs can keep up with her. She don't have to keep up the songs. Whatever. Um, and then uh, we got Messiah which is an interlude and her interludes were amazing because she has amazing dancers so there was some guy with some fabric and was blown in the fans but it was like he made the fabric come to life and he was doing shit with it and through the whole song but it wasn't like an interlude where it's sort of like part of the song or a dub of the song no it was the whole song that he was performing to and then um we got body shop so people were actually impressed with the guy with the fabric and stuff. They kept clapping and screaming and whatever because he would make it go up and then it would go down and it would come up again. And I know somebody was like controlling the fans that was making it blow harder or softer or whatever because um, he kept letting it go and had to grab it. Um, and we got the body shop. 
Now, Body Shop is another song from Rebel Heart that the, the damn concert ground to a halt fan-wise. It was like, people were like, okay, when is she going to be over? She going to do some shit we know. <laughs> when is she going to do like a prayer? You know, so um, Body Shop, she basically, the, the set change where they put some tires on the stage and some pieces of cars on the stage. And there was like a half a car on the stage. And um, Body Shop is an okay song, but I can tell you the crowd just wasn't in it. And this is how you can tell when the crowd was into a Madonna song and when the crowd wasn't into a Madonna song. And I kind of did the same thing. When everybody was excited about a Madonna song, phones went up, everybody recording. You know, but, uh, but you know, sometimes halfway through the song, people go, you know, they put their phones down, whatever. Body Shop, you know, people recorded, but it wasn't that many. Especially in the sections that I could see, it wasn't that many uh, people who gave a shit about Body Shop. So we were all pretty happy when that song was over. Um, then she went into True Blue. Now... True Blue is one of the classic songs, so she was like, oh, do you want to hear me sing a classic song? And I kind of took a look at the Montreal version, and she actually says the same exact thing that she said in Montreal. She said in D.C. And she was like, sing along with me. And <laughs> I know there was a lot of, there was like a lot of over 30, over 40, over 50, maybe in their 60s, you know, coming to see Madonna. Um, there was a lot of young folks too, but it, mostly everybody was over 30. And, you know, but I think we all getting kind of old and we ain't heard this shit in so long. So she kept saying, you know, sing with me. And I ain't going to lie, I forgot the words. And True Blue actually wasn't one of my favorite Madonna songs. It was like, you know, when that shit was released, I was like, okay, I'll wait till the next video comes out. You know, what else you're going to come up with? You know, thank goodness she came up with uh, um, Open Your Heart. You know, that was a hell of a lot better than True Blue. Um, so, I couldn't remember the words of True Blue, and neither could half the audience. She kept saying, sing with me, I can't hear you. You can't hear us because we can't remember. Um, then she went to one of my all-time favorite Madonna songs, Deeper and Deeper, and then the show just dramatically picked up again. Um, but I must say that there were a lot of older fans for True Blue that, like, there was this one black lady that was, like, a down, uh, aisle down for me. And any time a classic Madonna song played, she jumped up and she just started dancing. True Blue was one of her songs. Um, and, uh, so the next song was Deeper and Deeper and blew the audience away. Everybody loved Deeper and Deeper. Except it was funny because there was a part in Deeper and Deeper where it kind of cuts off and you think that she's finished singing Deeper and Deeper. And I don't know why it suddenly cut off the way it did. But the fans were like, you know, oh yeah. And I was clapping too. And then the song came back and I was like, oh, you're not finished. <laughs> that was a moment because it wasn't just me that was like, oh. I shouldn't be clapping now. You're not finishing your performance. It was, you had to be there. It, it was just funny. Um, then she went into Love Don't Live Here Anymore. If you remember when she did the Slow Ballad album, you know, that was on air. That remake was on air. So she did a piece of Love Don't Live Here Anymore. And then there was a lot of people that went, yeah, oh my shit, she's singing Love Don't Live Here Anymore. And then she went from Love Don't Live Here Anymore to her song Heartbreak City which once again is from Rebel Heart, and the fans went from excited to hear Love Don't Hear Live Here Anymore to, oh, what's this shit she planned? Is this something that she's done? And then this, it was the, 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 the auto body shop set was kind of lame. I'm sorry, Madonna, it was kind of lame. You know, it was okay, but for Madonna, I expect better. And, you know, the, when she did Heartbreak City, they, the steps came from the roof. And I was like, what are you doing on the steps? And so she and the guy are going up and down the steps like they're arguing or whatever. And it ends with her pushing him 
off of the top of the stairs and he falls into a, to I guess a, you know, um, uh, whatever the fuck that catches you when you fall. So it, it took him underneath the stage. And um, honestly, people really wasn't feeling Heartbreak City. Just like they weren't feeling Body Shop, Devil Prey, or Iconic. Um, Rebel Heart just wasn't that album. Um, then she came after Heartbreak City. Uh, the next song was Like a Virgin. And as soon as the Like a Virgin beat came on, people were like, yeah! Like a Virgin, she's going to do Like a Virgin. But... I think Madonna's tired of doing Like a Virgin because that was the lamest shit I've ever seen in my life. <sighs> like a Virgin sucked. Okay? And this is how you know it sucked. Because people, when they heard the beat, you saw nothing but phones everywhere. Halfway through her performance, by the time she got the grinding on the, the ground, people had already put their phones away. You know, including me. You know, so it was like, Really? I can't, I don't want this video to be copyright infringed and not shown, but I'm going to show all my friends this little lame ass dance Madonna did. I was like, this is a dance that a bitch that don't know how to dance do. And we know Madonna know how to dance because there were songs in the concert where she danced. And it wasn't like, you know, like I said, some of the songs were slowed down and it made it, you know, kind of not as exciting. And some songs were same tempo, like when she did songs like Living for Love. That's like her favorite song. You can tell what song makes her Madonna come alive. There were songs that it seemed like she sang just because, I guess she said, let me throw this motherfucker up in here. And, you know, I guess the fans will appreciate me going back to Material Girl or, uh, or True Blue or Who's That Girl or Dress You Up in My Love, whatever. You know, it's like... You could tell when she was really feeling in her Rebel Heart songs, Madonna was feeling the audience just wasn't feeling it with her. And um, Like a Virgin was such a disappointment. There were people, I was looking at their faces, you know, that's how boring it was. I stopped looking at her, I started looking at the audience. And they were like, Ugh. And I was like, Yeah, I know. That's why I said this probably is going to be my first and last Madonna concert. The concerts I, the concert I should have saw was the Reinvention Tour. You know, or something like that, because that was probably the greatest hits and, you know, giving you the songs that you want the way they are. Um, and then after Like a Virgin came the um, Sex Interlude. And when I say Sex Interlude, the name of the song is Sex. And I was waiting for Madonna to come out, but I did, then I didn't realize it because Madonna's interludes for her to change clothes or whatever... You know, let her, she has so many dancers, she can put ten dancers on the stage, like five girls and five guys, I think it was, and still have, like, the Asian girls and different people in the backstage so they can come out for the next song while the other dancers were in the back and change clothes, and she can just keep it moving. But I guess that was her little break. So they did the whole song, the whole sex song. Plus it was another, I don't remember, but there was like a whole montage of songs like Justify My Love and I think a little bit of Erotica. And then it went into sex because um, they played the video with like Justify My Love and all that. And then they showed the kids on the bed and, you know, in their little, you know, school uniforms and stuff. And they were doing different sexual positions and the guys were putting their faces in the girls' crotch. Essentially, they were doing all the things that you would expect Madonna to do or what she used to do. She now has passed off to her dancers. So it was really nice. Like I said, the interview the dancers did was really nice. And the crowd was excited just to see, like, something, you know. Because, like, Madonna literally slowed the concert down to the concert. You know, she didn't keep up the concert. The concert kept up with her. And um, then she came out, like gangbusters for living for love now once again that was the big matadors costumes the guys with the horns and the shiny masks and you know living for love you know she is one of those songs you can tell she loves because she performed the fuck out of it you know and she was high energy she was dancing and she was very active in in that uh song 
After that, she went from living for love to La Isla Bonita. And she always throws this song in there. It was like, I don't remember a concert where she hasn't done La Isla Bonita. I think the one where they did Frozen, whatever, she didn't do it. But um, she loves it. So you could tell that whenever she does La Isla Bonita, she always gives it a little something extra. But it went back to being slow. So once so the last few concerts where she did La Isla Bonita, it was very high energy and high impact. But now, you know, this one slowed away the fuck down to the point where I didn't even recognize the song at first until I heard the chorus. I was like, oh, this is La Isla Bonita. I was like, is this some other song? Because she did a couple of Spanish songs. I was like, is this one of the other ones? And I was like, oh, I actually like La Isla Bonita and I like the fast versions that she remake she did. Um, so it's funny, I didn't recognize it. Then came the 80s melody, medley. Now, my problem with the 80s medley is that they kept the Spanish theme going with these uh, maracas, I think they're called. Um, it, that maracas beat, that sh 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 sound was throughout the whole thing, and it was very disconcerting because, you know, it didn't fit the songs. Like, it didn't flow into, like, a different Latin beat to that was kind of like the original beats or whatever, like she's done in the past. No, it was, like, one consistent beat, and she just, the lyrics just changed, not the beat of the song. And it was annoying to me. It was annoying as fuck, actually. Uh, I'm just put it out there. Um, so she did Dress You Up In My Love, which is, you know, throwback from her very first concert. Um, Get Into The Groove, Everybody... Lucky Star, and she went back to Dress You Up In My Love, um, but those maracas were annoying as fuck. It just, you can see it on YouTube, it just takes away from the song in my opinion. Um, who's That Girl, once again she slowed it down, and um, she, and I hate to say it, but it was one of them songs where she sat down with a guitar, and was, you know, like, okay, I'm gonna... Slow the concert down now. She literally told us that. And, you know, I'm going to do Who's That Girl. No, she didn't say she's going to do that Who's That Girl. She was talking about herself and, like, you know, sometimes she doesn't know who she uh, is. That she's, you know, um, but she knows she, Bitch, I'm Madonna. And then everybody went crazy. And then she started singing the song. And it was Who's That Girl. And she kept saying, Sing with me. Sing with me. I mean, you know them fucking words of Who's That Girl. I mean... Yeah, Material Girl, something like that. We know the words. Lucky Star, we know the words. Um, who's that girl? Not so much. I mean, it's from a movie soundtrack. I know it was a hit, but, I mean, it was a hit in the late 80s, early 90s. I mean, it's 2015. We don't know the words. You probably didn't know the words, so you rehearsed it. Like Barbara Streisand, when she, I, I've never seen a Barbra Streisand concert. I do not like Barbra Streisand. Don't, don't even get those twisted. But, I saw in the view or something where they were saying that, you know, and I think Diana Ross too. Diana Ross will actually be here in Baltimore tomorrow. But, you know, that when they forget the words to their songs, they just ask the audience to sing it. <laughs> you know, because they're like, it's been 50 years since I've sang that song. And they still expect me to remember it like it was yesterday. I, I've heard Diana say it and I've heard Barbara say it. And Madonna, may have been, she knew the words to her song. But we didn't know the words of Who's That Girl. Some people did. All people knew was the chorus. So when she was singing the actual song, it was kind of, you kind of heard a little murmur of people, I guess, knew it or trying to hum along with it. But then when it got to the chorus of Who's That Girl, everybody was like, Who's That Girl? <sighs> and uh, then she sang Rebel Heart and she said the artwork on the screens was from her fans and, and you know and there were all rebel hearts and we've stuck with her for 30 years and blah 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 and ain't nobody checking for rebel heart we ain't know that song you know so now one guy who was like a seat across from me in the aisle he took a picture and he opened his shirt up and he had a tattoo rebel heart so he probably knew the song the rest of the audience didn't really know the song i'm sorry we didn't 
So thank goodness when that song was over. And let me tell you, the whole I went online and I pulled up the set list for the concert because I was so bored. I mean, back when I think Body Shop was playing, I was like, how many songs is left? I'm ready to go. <laughs> that's like, so that's like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven songs in. I'm ready to go. I heard, I heard Holy Water. I'm good. I, I don't have to stay. You know, but I stayed, of course. Um, cost you much money not to stay. Um, and then uh, after Rebel Heart, Illuminati came on. And Illuminati is one of the hot songs on the album. You know, there on the album is like what nineteen songs. Out of 19 songs, I think I liked four or five. So there was like 14 songs I didn't give a shit about. And, and Illuminati is actually one I liked. But it turned out to be another interlude. Just like I liked Sex, the song Sex. That was an interlude. And so was Illuminati. But once again, the dancers were amazing. They were on these big ass stilt type shit. And it was flexible. So they were like going back and forth. Like they were almost down to where the odds can touch him and two of the guys grabbed the guy and threw his ass up in the air and brought him back down. But they were amazing. Phones everywhere. Just like, it was just really hot to see this. And then it made me think about why isn't Madonna doing this? I know it's whatever, but because but, I thought to myself, Pink would do it. You know, Pink is fucking from the ceiling and shit and trapeze and shit. I said, it would have been cool to see Madonna do that. They're harnessed in. It's not like a bitch gonna fall. Um, and I say bitch a lot. No, no, nothing meant by that Madonna. Um, then we get to, I think probably one of Madonna's all-time favorite songs. It's never, ever been my favorite song. But anytime she performs it, she comes all the way to life. And that song would be uh, music slash candy shop. So when whenever Madonna sings music, I personally, when the song came out, I thought to myself, there's no, really, there's no lyrics to this song. She's just saying music for four or five minutes over and over again. So it's, it's one of them songs that felt hollow to me. It was like, really? This is actually a song? But she loves it. And she performed the fuck out of it. I mean, she loved performing the song music. And I put a note here that she got her energy back. Because during the whole dress you up and who's that girl and all that, her energy went way down again. And oh my god, I gotta say, the dress you up segment for the 80s medley, worst fucking clothes ever. Okay, it was like, they went from amazing, you know, set clothes on a set, to what was this shit? It looked like they went to the thrift store in Party City and threw some shit together. That was some horrible ass shit. Even in the concert, Madonna was like, I'm not used to wearing this many clothes, but I wanted Barack Obama to come, so I tried to tone my show down. But he didn't show. Bitch, you ain't show, take the damn clothes off. You're in shape. Shit. You know, have, have the dance take the clothes off. Shit. Something. You know, we want Madonna. So, um... So she did music. She did candy shop. Candy, the candy shop part of the music segment. She once again, she loves saying her sugar's raw and open her legs up and my sugar's raw. We get it. And I know you love it and you look like you had a good time doing that. Um, and she had the 60s persona. So she was talking as baby talk. like She was like, a, I think it's a 60s or 50s flapper girl or maybe it's the 40s um, or 20s. I can't remember. Um, but, you know, she was trying to use this, this kind of naive type personality she was using. And, um, it was cute. And her outfit was back to being amazing. You know, like, she actually had a stylist. And, um, then she did Material Girl. Um, Material Girl was okay. Um, I was actually kind of bored with the song. Um, she did put effort into it because she, I think that she realized once she realized she was in the last stretch of this, this concert, her energy went way, way, way up. Because it, the whole middle part of the concert, she checked out. She wasn't, no. She checked out. But the last part of the song, starting with music, with the song Start With Music, she was into it. Candy Shop, she was into it. Material Girl, she was into. 
And then the surprise of the night happened. And La Vie and Rose, I, I, I know I'm saying it wrong because it's 3.30 in the morning. And uh, it's French. Uh, La Vie and Rose, whatever you call it. But it's a French song, and she sang it in French. And, you know, she was like, sing with me. Bitch, we don't know French. I've heard the song before. It's a beautiful song. You know, I kind of know part of the song, but it's not enough to fucking sing the song. But the song was fucking beautiful. Madonna sang it live. The audience was like, in awe. She got a major standing ovation. I mean, it was like, you should record this shit and put it, put it out as a single. I mean, that's how good it was. Um, then she went into Unapolog Unapolog Bitch. Unapologetic Bitch. Which is, once again, one of my favorite songs on the album. One of the five that I liked. And it has a reggae beat. And my note here says, Lackluster Dancing. The dancers were getting into it, but I could see they were holding back because... Madonna Hart wasn't in it. I'm sorry. Maybe she, it was an off night. It's too soon in the concert. We're with the, with the second, third date. So it was like, you know, I felt like Madonna didn't want to be there. She was just trying to make some money. Like she said in the concert, you know, thank you for sticking with me 30 years. That's why my kids are going to grade schools. And then everybody laughed. But it's true. Um, but Unapologetic Bitch, the dancing was horrible. And, you know, and I'm, like, looking at the set list as next to last. And then, you know, after Unapologetic Bitch went off, she was, like, the, on the screen said, bye, bitches. And then people started leaving. <laughs> you know, they were, like, but, I mean, anybody that's ever been to a concert knows that, you know, there's going to be one more song for the, uh, um, it's 3.30 in the morning. You know what I mean. You know, when they come back out, you know, the encore. So, her encore is Holiday. So, you know, but she didn't wait that long to come out and to do Holiday. So, um, maybe it was a two-minute wait before Holiday, the B for Holiday came on. And then people started, you know, screaming and shit. So, I watched maybe a minute or two of Holiday. And then I'm like... It's too many fucking people to the stadium. It's time to roll the fuck out. I'll go on YouTube and watch, you know, the ending of Holiday. I watched the beginning of it. She came out. She walked out. She had the flag on and shit, you know. And I was like, okay, I've, I've seen her do Holiday for the last 20, 30 years. So I'm kind of good with it. You know, I've never seen it actually physically live. But it's better to get the hell out of Verizon Center and start getting to my car before I get stuck in traffic, <laughs> you know, and stuff like that, because the police were out in full force, and it was tons of people, and also I ran to the bathroom real quick before that shit filled up, so I actually left in the middle of holiday, I, you know, I came home, and I actually watched the end of, of it before I did this review, um, so that was it, and if you notice, I never mentioned an intermission, there was no intermission, because the bitch came out so late, I mean, the concert was supposed to start at 8, the DJ stopped at 9, and she came out at 9.30. So, at 9, at 9 o'clock, they were still, like, checking lights and shit. I was like, I got to this, I got up this motherfucker, and I got to D.C. at 7 o'clock. You know, I was parked in, in my seat by 7.30. So, her coming out at 9.30 was a pain in the fucking ass, like two hours, like the fuck, so, <laughs> really, so, you know, and the DJ, you know, was good, but, you know, and the only thing I brought is I brought the program, so it has memories that I can take with me, since I have programs of all the other concerts, I didn't like it being $30, but, you know, a, it is what it is. So that is my fan first reaction of actually, you know, going out to see Madonna at Rebel Heart Tour live. It was very disappointing. Halfway through, I was ready to leave. Um, the Madonna that I watched on DVD, <clears throat> DVD 
you know, um, the concerts on VHS back when it was, you know, watching VHS tapes. This was not her. I know she's older. I know she's done all these tours. You know, I just feel like, you know, just like when I went to see Britney Finn Fatale tour, Britney checked out. Circus tour, Britney was on it. She was making a comeback. It was awesome. The Femme Fatale tour, Britney was like, give me your money, get the fuck out. That's how I felt with Madonna. Madonna was like, I'm giving you 70% of me. You know, when the DVD, Blu-ray comes out, you'll probably see 100% of Madonna if you don't see her live. But, I don't know, maybe for New York or something, she'll be like 100 because she, she you know, loves New York. But for DC, she was okay, but... Based on this concert, I would never, you know, go see her live again. You know, I might consider it if it's in conjunction with an album that's good. And I might wait till the, the actual day of the concert to see what tickets are half price. <laughs> you know, because, you know, it wasn't worth full price. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed my review. It was very honest. I know I did my Janet Jackson fan reaction, and people were eating me alive. You know, of course, if you put horrible comments to me, if you do constructive criticism about my video, I'm fine with it. But if you just start saying shit about me or whatever that has nothing to do with nothing, you know, I delete those comments because I'm not going to have all that negativity out there. I paid my money to go see Madonna. I brought a program, I brought a highest expensive ticket, I was almost close enough to the stage to touch her, you know, so I didn't get a cheap ticket, and, you know, I drove all the way to D.C., an hour drive, and, you know, I was up, hour back, so I'm entitled to my opinion, if you're a diehard Madonna fan, and even if you went to the D.C. show, and you're like, motherfucker, what are you talking about? Look, this is my observation from my seat and people that was around me, you know, so, so this is what I saw, this is how I feel, you know, you may love Madonna, you know, I personally, I've loved Madonna since the beginning, I'm 42, so yes, I was there when the shit began, and, you know, and I'm going to call it like, like, tell it like it is, if the concert had blown me away, I've been like, god damn, that was the best fucking concert ever. Just like you can say Britney Spears' Circus Tour was great and Femme Fatale was horrible. You know, it was horrible. <laughs> you know, Rebel Heart was one of the most disappointing concerts I've ever seen in my life. You know, the TLC concert I saw was better than this shit. And those bitches came out two hours late. I mean, Christina Aguilera and all the motherfuckers was gone. These bitches didn't come out so people were walking the fuck out. They only did an hour, like maybe hour, ten minutes set. Okay, you know, we missed a whole fucking chunk of the concert, and that shit was better than this shit. You know, I left Madonna's concert, and, well, I think I really need to call Ticketmaster and see if I can get half my money back, because it was not worth the full price of admission. You know, that's just how I feel about it. So, as I said in my Janet Jackson, I'm about to make some bitches mad. So, and that's the diehard fans, you know, so like I said, you can do your negative comments, I will delete them. You know, if I feel you're saying something that's constructive criticism, or you say, well, I went to Madonna's concert, and the people in my aisle were new to words of True Blue. You know, the ones in mine didn't, maybe yours did. Fine. I can do, I can deal with constructive criticism of you defending Madonna and her tour, and oh, she was so great. I'm good with that. But when you do personal attacks and you don't even fucking know me, and I'm doing an objective review of the concert I just paid for and saw, you know, it is what it is. <laughs> okay, so that was my review of the Madonna um, Rebel Heart Tour. And um, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you look at my other reviews. And that's it for me. It's like 3.41 in the morning. I took an energy drink to drive my ass back home, and I need to take a sleeping pill to knock me the fuck out so I can get up and go to the gym in the morning and get my He-Man on. Because I'm losing, I'm 
I'm doing a fitness video that comes out in January. Um, years ago, I lost 46 pounds in four months, and I might even put my before and after picture in there so you can see my transformation. And then last year, my mother died, and I started eating fried chicken and chitlins and all the shit I didn't eat, what I grew up with as a kid. And then I gained some weight back, so now I'm doing this fitness video to show people. People always ask me, how'd you lose the weight? So now I'm showing people how to lose the weight. I, now I, I got to work out every day. But um, come January, I will be back to my perfect weight. And I've already lost 20 pounds, so I've got 40 more to go, or actually 37 more to go. So I got 37 pounds to lose by January. So... Hopefully, if you're looking for fitness, if you need to lose weight, if you want to get muscular, I mean, I'm a fitness trainer, so I can, if you want to wait till January, you know, after the holidays, my video's going to be awesome, because I videotape myself every single day, I do weigh-ins every single day, and hopefully, uh, my journey will inspire you, and you won't be asking me, come New Year's, resolution time, How'd you do it? You know, instead, you're like, oh, shit, I saw your your video, and it was great, and I lost weight just like you. So, that's it for me. I feel like I'm starting to ramble because it's so late, and I'm, you know, having energy drink in me. So, I'm going to cut this video off right fucking now. Have a good night, or good morning, or good afternoon, whenever the fuck you're watching this. So, but thank you for watching, and I will also put all of my links, Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, Twitter, all those good things. You can join me on any of those. You can continue the conversation on, on there. My Facebook ticker is usually at the Friends Max at 5,000, but I piss people off every fucking day. So there's usually one or two people a day that drop off because they can't handle what I post. So, so... You know, check it out. You know, if there's an open space, I will add you to the friend list and you can see all the amazing stuff that I post every day on Facebook, which entertainment news, history, you know, political shit, um, half naked people, you know, hot, which is hot models. I post amazing men, amazing women, you know, humorous jokes. So my Facebook page is like every fucking thing. I mean, you don't have to be a friend. You can follow me, and you'll see all this shit I post. It's like people thank me every day for the shit I post. So, you know, hopefully you'll enjoy it too. Peace.